Hi, this is Miss Overly, and I am back with Lesson 3-4, Direct Variation, one of my favorite topics. Um, today you will be able to write and graph direct variation equations by the end of this lesson. So what is direct variation, you're probably wondering. Well, direct variation graphs always go through the origin. They form straight lines, so they're linear. Um, and what this will look like as an equation is y equals a number times x. Usually in direct variation refer we refer to that number generally as k, but it's the slope of the line. So some people refer to it as m. So um, again, it's going right through 0, 0, the origin of the graph. It's a straight line and the equation looks like this. Now in our first example, we're going to name the constant of variation for each equation. So that's the big idea here, that constant of variation. And then we're going to find the slope of the line that passes through each pair of points. And that makes me think I should go back and um, give this a new name. So I'm scrolling back a page. I'm going to add one thing to my notes from before. K is the slope of the line, and some people refer to that as the constant of variation. So the constant of variation is important. That's the same thing as slope. Okay, and the book here goes through finding that idea of slope by using the formula that you used in one of the previous um, lessons in this chapter where you do y minus y over x minus x. Remember, slope is always rise over run. Um, so if slope is rise over run, you could do that, or the way I like to do it is focus on one point that crosses perfectly on my graph, like negative 1, 4, and I find the rise first. So I literally draw a straight line from that point to another point, and I am going to count how far up or down it went. And in this case, it goes down 1, 2, 3, 4. So my rise is negative 4. My run is that from left to right, that point goes over 1, so my run is 1. So the slope is negative 4 over 1, or you could just write that as negative 4. You can see up here that they wrote the equation as y equals negative 4x. So same thing here for part b. I choose two points on the line that cross perfectly, and I start with the one on the left always, and then I count the rise to get from one point to the other, how far up does it go, and then how far does it run, how far over does it go. And then I can put those numbers into my equation. So right now as I'm counting these, I'm noticing that it goes up 1, 2, 3, so my rise is 3, and it goes over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, so my run is 6. So the rise is 3, the run is 6, 3 over 6 reduces to 1 half. So again, you can see that they wrote the equation in direct variation form right there. All right, for this next example, they ask you to graph y equals negative 6x. The first thing you're going to want to do is write the slope in rise over run form. So we know the slope is always that number by the x, negative 6. And remember, you can always write any number over 1 without changing its value. Now that we have the slope, that will help us get our second point. But remember, direct variation equations, equations that are written in this form, y equals kx, or y equals the slope times x, always go through the origin. So the first point we're going to plot is 0, 0. The second point we're going to plot comes from the ratio negative 6 over 1, which tells us we're going down 6 because it's negative, and we always move to the right 1. So now I have two points, and I can connect them. You'll see that I just did that. Once your points are connected, you have a line. So that's how you graph a line. Um, again, if it's direct variation, you know one of your points will go through the origin. That's a really important piece to remember. The origin and a straight line means direct variation.
Now for our third example, they ask us to suppose that y varies directly. That phrase tells us it's going to be an equation that takes the form of a direct variation equation, as x does, when y is 72 and x is 8. So we know two of the things in our direct variation equation. Do you remember what the direct variation equation looks like every time? You got it. It's y equals kx. Now, we know y is 72, so I'm going to rewrite the equation with 72 in for y, and we know that x is 8. When two numbers are right next to each other, they're being multiplied. So to undo that multiplication, I'm going to divide both sides by 8. And 72 divided by 8 is... You got it. Good. So, let's see. So now they ask us to use the direct variation equation that we just kind of came up with from our previous example. We know k is 9, and this is the equation we're using. So in order to do that, I better rewrite this equation as y equals... 9 times x, and now we're trying to find x when we know y is 63. So I'm going to plug 63 in for y and rewrite my equation. And now I'm going to want to divide both sides by 9 to get x alone. So x ends up equaling 7. Now, a fun fact about direct variation is that one of the most common places you'll see it in the real world is when you are comparing distance, rate, and time using this equation, d equals rt. I love these problems, and you, they will come up again and again. So let's look at one of those. The distance, and I'm going to pull out those three ideas, a jet travels, varies directly, you know what that means, you know what kind of equation we're going to be writing, as the number of hours it flies. And now we know a jet traveled at 3,420 miles in 6 hours. So we know the distance, we know the time. And they tell us to write a direct variation equation for the distance d flown in time t. So I'm going to go back to that distance equals rate times time idea, copy that equation because we know we're talking about distance and time and the rate. Ooh, that was nice and loud. Um, and I'm going to bring it over here because that's what we're working with. I'm also going to write down what we know. The distance equals 300, 400, three, I should say 3,420, and the time equals 6 hours. So, if they want us to write a direct variation equation, we need to find that rate, or in other words, the slope of the line. So let's plug those values in here. 3,420 equals r which is what we're solving for, times 6. And now we're going to get r alone by undoing multiplication. And I'll let you do that now. So I'm getting r equals 570 miles per hour, which means my equation that I could use going forward is d equals 570 times time. Um, would you be able to graph that? Remember, one of the points is the origin. And then from here, we'd go up 570 and to the right 1, because that's our slope. We always write that in rise over run form. Would you be able to use the formula? If we gave you just distance, could you work backwards to find time? If we gave you just time, could you use the formula to find the distance? So once you're able to get that slope, you can do a lot with this. And that's what we're going to play around with a little bit more tomorrow. Good work.